Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. We're currently in Austria and it's a lovely summer's day in autumn. Normally it's much colder this time of year around here. Now in today's video I want to give you a bit of a van update because a lot has happened since the last time we've seen you. Answer some of your questions and I also want to share with you our upcoming travel plans. Hey there, we're Charlene, Chris and Holly and we've been living and traveling full time in our motorhome for over two years now. So we're actually on the move already today. We just stopped by the supermarket and we're gonna go and try and find a spot beside this lake. Now, we've been to this spot before. Last time we were there, there was this sign that said that a hotel was gonna be built. So we don't really know whether this parking is still available, whether there's a hotel now, but we're gonna make the drive and see if it's still there. What do you think? This is not the same as last time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful lake. Don't jump, Holly. Do not jump. This place is magic. It really is. There are some ducks here. The water doesn't look inviting at all, but I really love it. We're surrounded with mountains, trees, blue skies today. It's lovely. Our summer is going to be a bit longer this year. Yay, I'm so happy. I'm trying to escape the cold. A yes, bit. last year winter started early for us because we were in Switzerland, it was like zero up there. You remember top of the world? <laughs> yeah, and then we come back to Germany. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, we had a very cold winter. This one is so funny. She's looking at the branches and she wants to catch them. Yeah, the lake is flowing in this way. So all the stuff are just coming towards us. I don't know if you can see them there on the lake, but Holly spotted them already <laughs> and she's just waiting for them to come. We're currently in October and you wouldn't believe it because it does feel like summer. <laughs> now the only downside here is because of the super huge mountains, it does get dark pretty quick. It's only about four o'clock I think and the sun is nearly hidden behind the mountain. We're just going to head back to the van and we're going to try and sleep in this spot. It's pretty hard in Austria to be honest because a lot of places are a no camping zone but we've found that it's mostly enforced in summer. In the off seasons normally it's not that much of an issue. Wow it's so quiet now. Like, there's no one here at all. Just an odd car now and then but there aren't really any tourists either. And we actually parked up beside the ski lift and that's why it's so quiet. Obviously it hasn't opened yet. Got another six weeks at least. Um, so I think because of that we should be okay to park up here. You want a treat? Good girl. So this is actually one of the notes that we found on the windscreen and in rough translation it means you're okay to stay one night but please leave tomorrow. So quick van update before dinner. I'm glad to say that Tandy is working perfectly, touch wood. After we left France, we entered Germany along the border, just kind of south of Strasbourg. The noise just persisted. In fact, it did get worse. So we stopped at a few Fiat garages throughout Germany on our way down. And most of them were all busy, to be honest. But one of them in this place called Lindenberg in Algau, I think it was called, said that he could fit us in. We stayed there overnight. And then the next morning he checked it out and he said that he thinks it's the alternator. We had to kind of order a new alternator we had to buy like original Bosch one which was rather expensive and after that the problem still persisted so we were very disappointed we'd kind of installed the new alternator they've been working on it all day the hourly rate in Germany normally is about 150 to 170 euros per hour uh, for mechanics this one I asked him beforehand and he said it's 120 so it's not too bad but still pretty expensive you know so they were kind of retracing their work to see what could have went wrong and they came back saying that some of the wiring needs to be changed as well, um, leading from the alternator and to the alternator. The problem was that they needed to order this part from Italy, which was going to take another week. As I mentioned in our previous video, we needed to get to Austria fast, so we decided to go by train. Uh, Charlene and Holly joined me, and we travelled from this little town in Germany all the way to Munich, 
and then down to Innsbruck. The trains are pretty good in this area to be honest but it was very hot and very busy as well so it was a nightmare. We're normally used to travel everywhere in our motorhome so it was really weird to kind of get on the train. Uh, we had our suitcases as well with us. I had two projects to work on and luckily Charlene and Holly were able to come with me. So yeah so we got there and then 10 days later we came back to pick up the van and it's been working since then. So it cost us around 2,400 euros in total which in German prices is quite average. To be honest we were a bit disappointed because as I mentioned last winter we spent a lot and even the back end of last year was quite expensive for us and yeah and since then we've just been working on a few projects here in Austria and during the last few days of summer. This is us for tonight. Very, very quiet. Obviously the ski lifts, there's no one here. And I think the hotels are even closed as well because it's like in mid season now. So we're pretty much alone here for the whole night and I don't think it'll be an issue. yourself sometimes. Charlene is having a spa day in the van. On the other hand, some of us are naturally beautiful. Aww. Pretty nice morning here by the lake. It was actually a very, very good night's sleep here. And as I mentioned, no one about. The sky was actually full of stars. In fact, I've seen a few signs here about this stargazing event, I think it is. actually got a duck joining the mix so we had to grab Holly quickly because I'm sure she would jump in the water to go and get it. Come on, reach! Come on! Yes! We didn't let Holly go in the water today because she's got a bit of an eye infection I think. It's been about two or three days and every morning when she wakes up her left eye is a bit dodgy at the moment to be honest. It seems to be getting better but every morning it's still a bit you know sticky and closed and as the day progresses it seems to get better. Tomorrow it's actually Holly's ninth birthday. So we just stopped at Empray's because Charlene forgot a few things. Uh, yesterday at the supermarket so she just popped in there quickly but to be honest like here in Austria everywhere you look there's a beautiful view. I'm just sitting in the van in the Empress parking lot. Why is this place just so picturesque? So beautiful. Look, look at that! Everywhere you look this is a standard view in Austria. So we've just stopped here in one of the first towns in the valley. It's called Alten Market in Pongau. So it's a very nice quiet place. And we've actually checked into this campsite. It looks really good. We paid 18 euros and it's for 24 hours and we can even use the laundry here as well. So from the supermarket I bought two types of cheese. One is called Alberg Cenere 
chili cuss and this one is gold perk cuss my other half might not like it <laughs> when i go and do the shopping i find so many types of cheeses it's very common here you know because they have a lot of cows and i don't know if we can hear them there are cows here at this campsite as well we will go later on and say hi to them mm. Since these are our last two days in Austria, today I bought this. I really love this. It's with coconut and pineapple. This was introduced to me by a friend of ours. We once met in Germany, I think. But I really love it. If you ever come to Austria, make sure to buy one of these. And on a sunny day like this, this goes down really well. So today I did the washing. I really love this campsite because they have a washing machine, they have a dryer. So the clothes are hanging there. Oh, look at this one. She doesn't want anything to do with me. No, I think I scared them off. So we're actually out for a bit of a sunset walk. It's so beautiful today and the campsite is just surrounded by all these forests that it was a shame really to stay in, in the van. We don't really know where we're going to be honest but <laughs> we've just found this trail in the forest and we're heading up to see if we can get a better view of the valley. So this week I went on a hike on my own and as I was going downhill after the hike you know um, there were a lot of cows together and one of them started charging at me you know started <laughs> coming my way and she was like ah! and i'm I like ha, 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 ha. <laughs> what were you trying to do <laughs> i didn't want to show them you know that i was afraid so i had to you know shout so normally you have to put your hands like this so they can see you Tall, I didn't you know? see any of that. They're just weird noises. You know where you're going? No idea. Autumn is here because there are so many mushrooms. But the weather, like with the temperature, it's not here at all. Running late this year. Hello. See, I'm telling you, they all look like they had a meeting, you know, and then they know my name and they spot me. They say, oh, it's this one. Let's attack her. And they're not attacking me. They just come to say hello. Pet them, Chris. So whenever we're hiking in these regions, we sometimes come to spots like this where people live and, I don't know, just imagine living here. Looks like there's road access here as well, I guess from the other side, but like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> it's so quiet as well. Yeah, they've got cows, we've got goats, everything. Hello! Hello! Oh, how cute they are! Yeah. They're so cute! They look like Julie! This one especially. Come on! Hello! 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 So in today's video, we also want to answer some of your questions, some of the most common ones. Um, so let's get to it. So the yeah. first one was in regards to Tandy, where we got it from, whether it's registered in France, and mm -hmm. which it is, and what we're going to do after we're done with it. So I think we need to start from the beginning. So it all started in 2020 when we started looking for our options, where we can buy a van, register insurance and all that. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was in 2021 <laughs> we bought it basically and we started our trip. Definitely, but before that there was a lot of work yes. and headaches mm -hmm. to decide like what we're going to do exactly. So, it was during the pandemic as well, yeah, so a lot worse. of things to consider and yeah, think of. But yeah, we bought it now. It's ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had it for two, uh, nearly two and a half years. So two, yeah, two and a half years already. We picked it up in July 2021. We actually bought it a few months before that. And we bought it online and we saw it for the first time when we actually went and picked it up in France. We did a video as well about it if you want to watch it. <laughs> Before that, 
we had to decide where we're going to buy it from. Now, we had some different options. Firstly, in Malta, where we used to live, it wasn't that easy because there's a 50% registration tax over there on Malta homes. Mm -hmm. So if you import it, or even if you buy one locally, they're 150% really. Um, of the cost so it wasn't worth it to buy one in Malta because of the taxes you know and a lot, a lot of things to consider the VRT we had to go all the way because our plan was to stay here in Central Europe so that's why yeah. we found this one in France and it's so convenient for us because the drive you know it's not that long as well yeah France is quite central and apart from that as I said like the price a 40,000 euro motorhome would cost 60,000 a motor just because of the import tax mm -hmm. you can't really get insurance to go abroad unless it's for a short trip like for one to two months and like Charlene said, imagine like having to drive down to Malta every year. There's two ferries and a long drive down Italy. So we went for the option in France. Another option just... Was uh, it Netherlands? Yeah, Netherlands and the UK. Like UK with Brexit, it was a bit difficult. So we didn't go for that option. And the Netherlands, there was like yearly fees. So the way it works in France, we set up what's called a Societe Civile. Um, there were some lawyer costs as well at the beginning to get it done. But since then, it's just been amazing, to be honest, because we have it registered under that Societe Civile and we have it insured in France as well with AXA. And, and we the pay... VRT is every two years as well. That's really good. Yeah, the vehicle check and the MOT is once every two years, so we don't have to go every year. There's no road tax as well in France because they just charge on the tolls. So that's the save as well. And as I said, the insurance is quite cheap. We pay 100 euros a month on that. And it's pretty much worldwide and includes breakdown cover as well. Get up! Come on! You want treats? Come! 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 Whee! The other question, what was it? What we're we going to do with the van when we're finished? So, our plan is to keep on living on the road because we really love it. It takes us to different places and we're also in nature most of the time. So, we love it so much. The plan is to continue what we're doing, you know, travel here, travel there, explore new countries, we really love it. Yeah, and it offers us an option where we can kind of experience different worlds. You can be in perfect Austria or Switzerland, and then you can visit places like Turkey where it's a different culture completely, yes. even where we're going next as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the plan really, we don't plan to sell it, and that's one of the reasons why we're traveling slow and not rushing about to visit as many countries as we mm -hmm. can. Another question, that, and this is the most common one that we get, is how we get the money to do this. And we answered it in a bit of detail in our previous question and answer from last year. So do check that out if you want to. Um, but the short answer is through my business. I run a photography and video business for the past six years. And most of my clients are in Central Europe. It's very seasonal as well, which means that it opens up big windows then when I'm not filming here. To travel like we did the trip to Scotland and the UK we did the trip to Turkey and we've also got a trip coming up next as well which we're really excited about that's about 90% of our income and the other 10% is mainly from social media that's how it is at the moment but yeah I'm so lucky really that we've got to a point where we are able to travel and work and do everything at the same time like, don't get me wrong, it's not easy, it's very, very hard to kind of juggle everything and fit everything in. We also work on the videos and vlogs that we create every week and they take a lot of time. So that's a lot of work. So we have to consider everything, you know, when it comes to work business and vlogs. So we try to also always, sorry, uh, coordinate and logistically, yeah, headache, you know, yeah. it's, it's a headache, yeah. but. We manage somehow. <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot of hours, I would say. So we work about 40 to 60 hours a week. But again, it's doing what we love. And like now we're filming, but we're in this beautiful forest. And that's why we yeah, love why we creating love it, videos honest. as well to have memories of our life, you know, on the internet. It's such a lovely life that we're living. So, yeah. Yeah, we share everything really like, in it. regards to our travels and what we do. Um, good things, bad things. In regards to my work, I can't really share too much because some of the projects are quite busy and I don't really have time to then film and then vlog myself filming. <laughs> so it's a bit difficult, but if you want to see more of that, I do post on Instagram and you can check out from there from time to time. Um, yeah, another question that we got is in regards to gear and it kind of ties in with the previous one because a lot of the gear that I have is what I've bought over the years through my business. But in regards to vlogging, 
just to give you a brief idea, we use a Panasonic GH5. Lumix. Lumix, yeah, there's actually a G9 Mark II coming out in about two months' time, which I think we're going to upgrade to. We're and thinking, we're not actually sure because it's a bit expensive. Cameras are all expensive, to be honest. Yeah, but worth it. It's always worth it because you get use out it, of yes. it. And then in regards to lenses, I use Leica lenses. And Leica. I have a Leica lens, Leica, Leica. How Leica. do you say it? I don't know how to say it. It's L-E-I-C-A. I don't know. Tell us. Leica. How do you pronounce it? Because I pronounce it as Leica and Chris pronounces it as Leica. Leica. <laughs> yeah. Leica are actually motorhome, so, so you might be right. Oh, yeah. Leica. So yes. we're currently using an 8 to 18 millimeter lens, which is a wide angle lens, and it fits us both in perfectly. And this is the most one that we use for vlogging. But then I've got a variety of zoom lenses. Close up. Yeah, yeah for close up shots. Mostly I use for my commercial work, but we sometimes use them in the vlogs as well to make it a bit more interesting. Apart from that, then we've got KNF concept tripod and a Rode Video Mic Pro. We also got two drones, one FPV and one DJI Mavic 2. I've also got a small pocket too. So it doesn't work too well because Charlene dropped it in I the water. I also dropped it in the water. Yeah, last year. <laughs> um, but for those of you maybe are looking to get started, that might be a good option because it's just simple, small, cheap, about 250 euros, I think. Yeah. And you can just buy some filters for it and you're good to go. We're not using it as much now because yeah. I destroyed it basically, but what can you do? It's still there, but sometimes we use it. Yeah, but that's a quite a good option to start off, to be honest. Something like that or a GoPro, maybe. Some lenses go like from 1,000 up to 3,000 euros, and some others even higher. So you only want to get into that kind of once you're used to it and you know that it's something that you want to do. Um, but to get started, like a DJI Pocket or a GoPro is perfect, to be honest. Um, just to get started and get the shots you need. So finally, we also want to share with you what's coming up over the next few weeks and months because it's getting dark and it's getting cold here <laughs> and we need to head down. I think we hiked up, it took us about 45 minutes to hike up here. So it will take us 30 to go down. So we need so, to get moving. So, yeah, next, you want to tell them what's coming up? Yes, yes. So right now we're in Austria and we're loving it so much here. We really love this country, but it's time to go somewhere else, yes. We're heading to Slovenia. This one is going to do a lovely adventure. I'm, I'm so jealous, to be honest, because I really want to go with him, but with Holly, I can't, so. Um, yeah, I... last time we were in Slovenia was about two years ago, I think. And if you've been watching since the beginning, we've got a few vlogs from there. Mm -hmm. And this time we're going to be passing through. We wanted to find something interesting to do uh, for the few days that we're there. And yeah, I'm looking forward for that. And then before that, just to let you know, next week we've got a very interesting video coming up. From here in Austria, we're going to be doing some hiking. And mm -hmm. one of them is really, really challenging. Yes. But anyway, so <laughs> Austria, Slovenia. Croatia. Croatia. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend some few days there. And then eventually we're heading to Montenegro and Albania. Yeah. Albania, yes, you heard me right, Albania. <laughs> yeah, these are two countries that we've never been to. And we're really looking forward to, to so get the experience. So looking forward to go there, yeah. Yeah, a bit of different culture as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're not sure exactly what we're going to do first. And we might even visit some of the other Western Balkan countries. And that should take us through until winter. So it all depends on timing. <laughs> so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week for our hiking adventures in Austria. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Subscribe and hit the like button. Yeah, you tell them. Bye. <laughs>